Seriously? I will state of course that if you do like my content be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can know the minute I have a new video go up because my upload schedule has been all over the place but that's not what you're here for so let's just get started now if it is that you saw my media freak out tag then I'm certain that you'll not be surprised that get a life Chloe Brown makes this list and is number one on my list after all Chloe is a computer whiz from a very rich very comfortable family who decides to separate away from her family in order to carve a life for herself after she has a near-death experience and carve a life is certainly something that chloe does and she does it with the same sarcastic wit and intelligence and brilliance that she's always done and yeah Chloe does have chronic pain, but she's always insistent that people see her as more than just a disability. And watching her fall in love with art artist Pat Superintendent Red was just a delight, an absolute delight to read. So get a life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert is the first recommendation on my list. The second book on my list is also a favorite, although I didn't read it this year. That is The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chokshi. Now, I think a lot of people come into this book expecting a Six of Crows 2.0 and I think that that does this book dis a huge disservice because you all know I have not hit it on my channel that Six of Crows is bay. I love that book but I also love love the gilded wolves and i think that the gilded wolves is more of a heist book than six of crows was but like you all are not ready for that conversation but anyway if it is that you're someone like me who loves treasure hunting games that are filled with puzzles and codes and you trying to decode and figure things out in order to move on to the next level the next stage then i think that the gilded wolves is going to be the book for you because this book is chock full of puzzles it's chock full of codes it's filled with these characters who bring their intelligence to play in order to try and figure out what the connection is in order to crack the codes in this book that would lead them to the treasure yes this book has a an amalgamation of different characters each one of them with their own individual agendas coming together in order to pull off a heist in 1889 Paris so you know what that means yes you get slapped with the racism left right front and center all over the place which means that if it is that you have this book and you're interested in picking it up it totally also works for the white supremacy prompt as well one of the lead characters is on the autism spectrum so the gilded was by roshani chokshi i love that book i can't wait for september silver serpent is almost going to be here and i'm through the roof yes um you all don't i can't scream because it's late at night right now as i'm filming this but I love this book I love this book now still on the spectrum that is a perfect segue to the third book on my list which is The Brightest by Ellen Wong if you just said hold up Noria The Brightest what about Kiss Quotient yes I'm not mentioning Kiss Quotient because I already mentioned it in my slut shaming video remember and I'm just I'm trying to give you as many options as possible so yes I did mention in this slut shaming video that Kiss Quotient will totally work for the blazing prompt but i I wanted to show the brightest some love because to be precise I wanted to show um, Kai some love because Kai is amazing He's also on the spectrum and his only interest is numbers he has no interest in relationship numbers are what makes sense to him however his mother is in the mood for some matchmaking because she absolutely wants him to settle down and so she travels to Vietnam to get him a male other bride now this male other bride is yet another character I love Esme Esme is amazing and she sees this as an opportunity for her to create a better life for herself a mother and her daughter who by the way um, Kai doesn't know anything about but anyway, she takes this opportunity as a chance to create this better life for themselves. Like, I love this book, except for the occasional instances where um, they infertilize Kai, which I found very grating, except for those parts. This book was just absolutely perfect for me. So, yeah, we had to make this list. You know another book that had to make this list? Daredevil Born Again by Frank Miller, illustrated by David Masuchelli. Now, <sighs> Daredevil Born Again is one of the greatest 
daredevil stories ever told. Yes, you heard that right the first time. It's one of the greatest daredevil stories ever told. If you don't agree with me, take it up with your mama. Like, Daredevil Born Again is just, it's, I mean, we see Matt Murdock at his absolute lowest. It is absolute lowest point. After Karen lets it spill, like lets his secret identity spill forth, and Kingpin decides to go to town on his ass the minute he could confirm that his arch nemesis, Daredevil, is the same person as attorney at law Matt Murdock. And so you have Matt Murdock, there's nobody on his side, is utterly alone, and he has to claw his way back. Like, that is just, that story, the, the pain, the anguish, the joy, the celebration, like, Dead Ever Born Again is that bitch is that bitch like and of course it makes the list the, the amount of superheroes that could absolutely make this list i just i i decided to pick only one because there are a lot of course there's daredevil so if you have any daredevil comic that you've been meaning to read and you've not gotten around to so this might be the perfect prompt for you to pick it up but there's daredevil there's of course professor x charles xavier there's misty misty knight there's iron man yes if you're like wait hold up iron man Iron Man? Yes, he has a shop now really close to his heart. And the reason why he has the reactor, he, he technically cannot live without the reactor. So yes, there is Okai, which the movies, which the Marvel movies conveniently forgot is death. I don't know what the hell they were thinking, but there's Hawkeye. The, the list is long. And if per chance, for some reason, like you don't know anything about Daredevil, which seriously but if for some reason you have no idea who the hell daredevil is it is a superhero is blind and he kicks ass yeah you have that right he kicks ass i sound odd let's agree that i would never do that again ever ever okay so taking my mind off Yes. Taking my mind over ass. Um, <laughs> the next book on the list is Unbroken, 13 stories starring disabled teens, which is edited by Marik Nitschkamp, which I'm fairly certain at this point in time, nobody will be surprised made the list, like an anthology made the list because I have, even with these recommendations, I have proven time and again that I love anthologies. I really, really do. And what an anthology this is. This is 13 stories ranging from across different topics from first loves to friendship to war set across multiple genres so there's contemporary there's a bit of fantasy there's science fiction that features teens with um a wide range of disabilities from physical disabilities to autism to mental illness all written by 13 authors with their own disabilities as well now the thing i love about anthologies is that even if it is that you do not love all the stories in the anthology you would find one or two or five that you absolutely adore so um yes that's i love anthologies i love anthologies next up is borderline by michelle baker which i'm going to admit the premise sounds extremely intriguing like intriguing as fuck because see in this story we follow millie millie our lead character who has gotten a second chance at life and has gotten a job with an organization whose job it is to monitor the traffic between their reality and a parallel reality so yeah basically she's like a supernatural traffic warden and hers is a responsibility that is very high because you see this is Millie's second chance at life. A failed suicide attempt cost her both her legs. So she has on prosthetics and um, she, and also cost her her career in Hollywood. So she really does need this job. And when our very first assignment involves her tracking down and searching and locating a missing movie star who also happens to be a member of the Sealy Court. Yes, 
You heard that right. I've brought in the Sealies. You all know I'm, the weakness I have for the Fae. But anyway, anyway, as I was saying, right? Um, it's her job to track him down and she has limited time and she has to do it whilst at the same time following a conspiracy that would lead to a war between the two realities. And it's a lot of responsibilities for her. And the fact that Millie also has borderline personality disorder and things get even more intense for her. And I actually, I'm, I can't wait to read this book. I'm really, really excited about, when I, about the chance about getting to read it. Also, because um, the writer does have... Concord! Concord! Really intrigued about it, especially because the writer does also have BPD herself. And yeah, borderline. Definitely interested. Definitely interested. Then there is An Unseen Attraction by KJ Charles, which is the first in the Scene of City series that is set in Victorian England in the year 1873, whereby our lead protagonist, Clem, who runs a housing lodge, he owns and runs it, right, um, spends his day in quiet conversation and silently pining over one of his lodgers, Rowley Green. Is it Rowley or Rowley? I think it's Rowley. I'm going to go with Rowley. Rowley Green, um, unaware, of course, that is pining, is mutual. Yes, people, this story is slow burn. It's slow burn personified. We love slow burn in this house. But anyway, as I was saying, it has no idea that the pining is mutual and things would most likely have gone in that vein for quite a while, except for the fact that one of his old lodgers turns up brutally murdered with the body dumped on his doorstep. And now it is up to Clem and Rowley to um, solve the mystery because they are fast running out of time. And yeah, they've got several targets on their back. Now, this is awesome kj charles writes like some of my favorite lgbtq plus stories so i'm intrigued also clem has clem has dyspraxia now from one romance to another romance except for the fact that this romance one is not a thriller two it is set in contemporary times and three um the characters are straight yeah i'm talking about the year we fell down by Serena bowen which I have read a couple of books by Serena Bowen, so there are some I really, really love, and there are some I'm kind of like, uh, you know, it's slightly iffy too, but I actually do have a lot of faith for this book, if anything, one, because we follow our lead character, Hori, who, yeah, baby. We follow our lead character, Corey, who has been looking forward to her first, her freshman year in college, in Agnes College, where she's meant to be playing. Hockey, yes, I know, yet another hockey book. Who would have thought that I would start, like, I don't know, drifting towards more hockey books? I I blame it on L. Kennedy. But anyway, a serious accident lands Corey in a wheelchair and has a living in the handicapped accessible dorms where Adam of the fine face, Adam of the hot body, Adam of the sexual magnetism, basically... She falls for Adam and they connect and everything else. The problem is that it is also Adam of the unavailable because Adam has a girlfriend. I know. Hello? Drama? Is that you? Yeah, it's Noria. Put me down at, oh my God, I cannot wait. This book is going to totally and completely. <sighs> it's fascinating. I like reading about like other people's lives being in drama because it's kind of like me putting that positive karma into the universe so my thirst for drama is not is not reflected in my own life i've like worked through it through fictional books you know you should try it it totally works like i'm serious for real for real for real it totally works ah next up is hold by michael Duncor. and before i say anything i would like to draw your attention once again to this cover like don't move away just like count breathe I look at the beauty of that cover. Isn't that cover stunning? Isn't that cover gorgeous? Isn't that cover breathtakingly beautiful? I know, it's it's really nice, isn't it? Okay, so in Hold by Michael Doncor, we follow Belinda, a house girl who is taken from the home that she's serving in Accra 
her and like flown to the UK for her to um, assist as and help to a family and also to help the family um, reach reach through to their daughter Amma, who used to be an A plus student. Um, they definitely didn't cause any troubles in the home, but all of a sudden she has been acting out and her mothers and her parents are worried. And that is part of the reason why Belinda is brought in. And these two women will find a way to connect. Yeah, baby. And these two women will find a way to connect and to bridge the gap and to form a friendship that would um, be threatened by the eventual reveal of the secret that Amma holds the reason why she has been acting up this book is steeped in depression because i remember when i was reading this book and I, all i was just thinking is that all saying that everybody likes to say about how black women are strong and how i personally consider it an affront and i think that it's just society's way of constantly heaping way more than we can bear on our shoulders you know under the guise of oh we are strong enough to handle it oh we are strong enough to take it you know and this character the characters in this book they stay silent for so long and the weight just breaks and eventually it scatters like like i said depression seeps through these pages of this book are the fact as well that um belinda does have OCD um, and it, it's the way in which she processes a lot of emotions that she feels yeah baby it's the way in which she processes a lot of the emotions that she feels in this book so yeah Michael Doncor a lot to unpack even with that pretty face next is disability visibility first person stories from the 21st century which is just like the other anthology mentioned earlier is a collection of short stories written by a group of disabled authors although these characters these stories are fictional these are stories that are based off of their own life and experience to show a wide range from of visible to invisible disabilities showing the complexities of their experiences as disabled people and the richness of their life it holds up in vivid technicolor the passion the talent and the lives of those within the community someone is currently reading this anthology in quarantine pages in our silent reading and they are having a blast with it and i just i had to add it to the list i had to add it to the list and it's it's definitely a book i can't wait to get my hands on like when i eventually get the chance to buy it and Still speaking about yet another book that I cannot wait to get my hands on. I am going to be looking at An Unkindness of Ghosts by River Solomon. I mean, one, she is amazing. I've heard so many great, amazing things about her writing. And two, seriously? I said an unkindness of ghosts by river solomon which one is a dystopian novel two takes place on a ship a ship that it's on its way to some sort of promised um promised land you know um three is set across the ship itself is organized ow ow ouch oh my god what the the ship itself is organized across racial lines that um, mimic the antebellum south. Seriously? Seriously? Again? 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 And follows our lead character, is it Esther or Esther? I think I'm just going to go with Esther. Our lead character, Esther, who is on the autistic spectrum and who is fighting back against a system that would treat her as less of a human being just because she is black, you know, on a ship that, like I said, has been set across the shore. Set across racial lines and when it is that she discovers that there might be more to the death of her mother who she assumed died of suicide 25 years prior she 
decides to dig deep. Um, like I said, this she decides to dig deep. What? After you pushed it down? What? After you pushed it down, she decides to dig deep. No! That is... Pump up! God damn. Apologies. My cat has decided to push my tripe. If you push down my camera. Pump up! What are you doing? Come back, come back here. Come back here. Come back here. Come back here. There you go. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Apologies for that. What was I saying? <sighs> A secret. A mother died. It might not be suicide. She's trying to figure it out. I really, really desperately want this book. Um, if you have it on your shelf, then it totally works for this prompt as well. Although, trigger warnings for racism, torture, slavery, sexual assault, rape, um, child abuse, homophobia, etc. There's a lot of trigger warnings um, in this book, but I, I really want to read it. Um, still in the line of epic stories that I cannot wait to dive into, and yet another black writer whose work I absolutely... I think I'm rambling. <laughs> I'm rambling too much. Um, I mean The Broken Kingdoms by N.K. Jemison. Yes, your girl has not read The Broken Kingdoms yet. I've not read The Inheritance Trilogy yet, but if you do have The Inheritance Trilogy on your shelf and you've read book one, um, you can totally completely pick this up because if you have read Book in Kingdoms, then you would remember that Ori Shot, who is our lead protagonist, is a blind artist living in a city where godlings walk around with mortals, you know. Um, but when it is that the godlings start turning up murdered all over the city, brutally murdered, um, the question is, who is responsible for that? And is it in any way connected to the stranger that she brought into her home, you know, prior before the killing start? Is is the stranger in any way connected to the murders? Um, is the stranger the perpetrator or a next potential victim? Or is it Ori herself? So, yeah, Broken Kingdoms by N.K. Jemison. Interestingly enough, a lot of N.K. Jemisin books will fit a lot of the sperms. Like, hmm. Just putting it out there. Just saying. And before you all come down in my comments being like, Noria, how could you not have read N.K. Jemisin? What were you thinking? Blah, blah. I know, I know. I, I'm going to get to N.K. Jemisin. I promise. Like, I have in my cart books by ship them as soon as possible, dive into them the minute they arrive. Like, I promise I will get to them soon, eventually. ASAP, I pro before the end of this year, ASAP, I promise. Next is yet another epic story, which I am, I'm fairly certain nobody's going to be surprised it's showing up on the list. It is, Yes, A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin, starting with the first book in the series, A Game of Thrones. I mean, is, is anybody surprised, actually, um, if it is that you, perchance, for some weird reason, have no idea what this is all about. It's just basically a bunch of families fighting together to sit on the world's most uncomfortable throne. I mean, have you seen all those swords? I don't care even if it is that um, a smithy went like over and like smoothed out all the edges. That throne looks uncomfortable as fuck. And you have this bunch of families, all of them desperately fighting for a chance to have sore bots for the rest of their lives. Apparently, the king of Westeros is the one with the sorest bots. So, good luck with them. Anyway, they're all fighting. There's a lot of killing. There's a lot of blood. There's a lot of gore. There's a lot of murder. There's a lot of scheming. There's a lot of manipulation. There's a lot of backstabbing. It's a combination of, you know, um, courtly intrigues and mechanics with actual brutal fights and everything else. Like, I, I love... You can tell that I... I love the series. I really do. And they, there is um, 
a variety of representation present in the series and amongst that we do have certain um characters certain characters with disabilities present in the series you have bran bran stark whose entire story kicks off when it is that um jamie lannister kicks him pushes him out the window when he spots him and his sister fucking yes content warning this series in case you didn't know incest is a thing in this series yes so um basically jamie pushes bran out the window Bran lands in the wheelchair. Jamie himself loses his hand, like they chop it off. I think is in a storm of swords. I think, yeah, I think it's a it's a storm of swords. It's a storm of swords. And um, Tyrion Lannister, who is beloved by a lot of people because of his smart. Um, Tyrion Lannister is a little person. So they are like, like I said, different characters. Lots of diversity present in the series. I happen to absolutely adore it and like everybody else we're waiting and hoping and praying for the next book in a series at this point i've just accepted that we might never get it you know um so i guess it's just a case of someone has to call first dibs to be the spirit that haunts jojara martin's spirit so that his spirit will then sit down and be like yo we have eternity. Here's what happens, right? I call first dibs. But anyway, like I said, love the series. If you're having a little bit of a problem picking it up physically because <laughs> it is quite a dense book, if you're having any problem, then consider picking it up on audio. The audio is fantastic. On a lighter, more romantic note, there is Tracking You by Kelly Moran, which is, which is the... It's a it's a friends to lovers story, right? That also has a bit of family matchmaking. And I do think that family matchmaking are the best because they always bring the hilarity. Someone is always being all sneaky and stuff. And also they get you, they know you, they understand you. I'm I'm certain that the minute Flynn's family found out that little young young Gabby, like the minute she discovered that Flynn was deaf, she when to go learn sign language so that she could like be his friend so that she could communicate with him and i'm certain that his family took note of that and were like yo she is perfect for him and his family is probably tired like obviously they were tired of waiting for these two dumbasses to realize that they are perfect for each other and so set plans in motion to get the two of them together i am really really looking forward to reading this my question though is that because this i'm looking at the cover and the cover is kind of giving me autumnal vibes so do you think i should put it off till later in the year should i read it earlier we're already almost in july though like this year is the longest and also the fastest year how is it possible how is the dichotomy possible able to exist in 2020 2020 feels like the longest year ever but it's also flying so fast but it's also the longest year ever so then there is brood of bones by a.e marlin which i have to admit i find the concept of this very 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 different and very interesting because you see in this book we follow iresha and iresha is one of the most powerful sorceresses of her time the only thing is that she also has narcolepsy so iresha falls asleep a lot now when it is that a certain urgent message has her returning back home to morimount she discovers that all the women in the town from the youngest to the oldest are all pregnant and all in their third trimester now automatically and logically she figures that there must be some sorcery afoot and so with the help and aid of some friends decides to solve this riddle solve this case the only thing of course like i said is that she does have narcolepsy so um when she's awake she's not really able to take full She's not able to really process everything she's seen to the best of her abilities. But when she's asleep, right? When she's asleep, her powers blossom and show in full force. And also she now takes like a walking step-by-step -step analysis of every single thing she noted 
while she was awake the concept like i said i find very intriguing i i don't think i've actually ever read a book with a character with narcolepsy so i am i am definitely very interested in this so uh, um yeah yeah I'm, I'm 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 more than interested then there's silent days and silent dreams by alan say which is a middle grade book that takes us on the imagining of the childhood of the artist james castle who was born two months premature who was born deaf and mute and autistic and most likely dyslexic and who never learned to read or write or speak or even learn how to use sign language and who became one of the most popular modern artists of the present day like his paintings his artwork are hung in galleries all over the world and this picture book basically takes us on the journey of of james castle's life and you know how he grew to become the world's one of the world's most modern celebrated artists of today then there's not if i see you first by eric lindstrom now i have not hidden it on my channel even though i do recognize that i have a lot of new subscribers hello everybody um you might not know this but i have not eaten this on my channel that i actually like um unlikable female characters usually because when people say they are unlikable they usually mean that they are loud they are brash they are impatient they are just a tad bit prickly and i think the reason why i connect so deeply with them i'm certain if i um when i eventually do get a therapist and we're having this conversation face to face the therapist will probably point out the fact that i am self-projecting on these characters and the reason why i love them so much is because i see part of myself in them and the therapist would of course be right and if you're like oh my god your therapist was right and your therapist is smart then you are also smart because i'm not disputing that i do know that that is kind of um that's the thing with me um what is the root of that now nah, we're not about to have that conversation but you see parker our lead protagonist is exactly that unlikable kind of person she calls things as is she takes zero shit just acts her ex-boyfriend Scott who she believes took advantage of her blindness you know and as far as she is concerned is dead to her so when he shows up you know years later back in town she's convinced like she's made up her mind to ignore his ass and shun his ass especially because she has more important things to focus on for example she's trying out for the trap team to she's giving out sometimes unsolicited love advice to her classmate and three she's currently processing and dealing with the grief of losing her father so scott does not in any way feature in this in this thought process for her but when she finally does uncover the truth about her father and about scott it's a learning process for her and it is parker's um chance to ask the questions that need to be asked whilst she also wonders if maybe it's time to break some of her own rules you know the rule of not giving people second chances now there's this thing about there's a reason why i really really love own voices novels because there's just something about the experience about a lived in experience that the author has been through that cannot be faked that authenticity cannot be um cannot be faked you know and that is stories that are own voices stories that you can see center the experience that this um this writer has been through they resonate with me and one of such stories is counting to d by kate scott whereby we follow our lead character sam who is brilliant she's an absolute whiz at math but at the same time some of our classmates also consider her dumb because see sam even though she's brilliant at math is also dyslexic and because she's had to spend all this time in school balancing that when her mother gets a job a new job that has her moving to a whole other city sam considers this a heaven sent mandate and way for her to rebrand and remake herself and that is what she does she remakes herself um hides the fact that she's dyslexic especially when she runs into this 
the really hot valedictorian that becomes her lab partner. But see, this book, Counting to D, is not about Sam hiding who she is because eventually she does start to share her truth with the reading teacher she's supposed to see and the really cute valedictorian. But what it is that Sam does Sam and by extension us the readers what we ex what we end up understanding is that you can be both brilliant and also illiterate and neither of those two traits define who you are and this coming from an author who has shared her own experiences with dyslexia and has mentioned the fact that for the first 20 years of her life she was illiterate coming from an author like this the words ring true next is other bound by corinne doivis which i would state that like corinne has written another book that is featured in my um the fuck ableism prompt recommendation video i did last year i'm going to leave the link to that in the description bar so you can check it out but yeah one of their books also made it to that list so <laughs> they are doing a great great job but anyway in other bound we have an interworld mind jump what do i mean by that see we follow nolan who lives in modern day america in arizona to be precise and the only thing is that every single time he closes his eyes he finds himself in the mind of Amara, a girl who has healing abilities and is currently tasked with seeing to the safety and life and survival of a princess that she's serving. And every single time Nolan blinks, is back there in her mind. But on the day he decides to take control of Amara's body and make himself known to her so you, she understands what is happening, the action sets off, in a sense, a haunting of them because their lives are in danger. Um, prior to that, though, he was seeing through her eyes and experiencing everything through her eyes. Now, the representation in this book is tight. Nolan is Mexican. Um, he lost his foot in an accident, so he's bound to a wheelchair. He also has seizures, so he has to take medications medications that mean his family have to work multiple jobs in order to afford his medication which means by extension that this book also other bound also works for the fuck capitalism prompts like you see the layers here you see the layers um so that's nolan amara on the other hand is black because she like with the way the book is written amara is black um She's also mute because her tongue has, was cut off when she was really young. And something tells me that this servitude to the princess itself is also probably based along racial lines. And if that's the case, if it is that, you know, the race is what, her race is what has her tongue cut out and her forced into serving a princess, then yes, this book also works for fuck white supremacy as well. And finally, I would wrap up this recommendation with a book that a lot of my friends have said is very cute. Very cute. I'm of course referring to A Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Bernard, which is a YA coming of age story and also a cute romance story between Steffi, who has selective mutism and social anxiety, and Reese, the new boy in school, who sees her when everybody else doesn't and who hears her even though he is deaf. And although she can't talk and he can't hear her, they still find a way to communicate. And in that communication, they fall in love. I know, I have a big smile on my face because this story just sounds cute and sweet as fuck and... I can't wait to eventually read it sometime soon. But yeah, I have a huge smile on my face. Okay. Um, but that is it. That's 20 book recommendations for the fuck ableism prompt for the fuckathon. Um, if it is that you're like, oh my God, but Noria, you didn't mention this book. Or, oh my God, Noria, you didn't mention this book. 
check the recommendation video from last year that i will leave in the description bar below i didn't want to repeat the same books that i had mentioned last year this year as well i wanted you to have a large pool for you to choose from and it's the reason why i took my time and i made sure that i found a whole set of books for you so um if it is that you're like oh this book is not there or that book is not there and come up If it is that you're like, oh, this book is not there or that book is not there, check out that video below. It might be possible, might be possible that it is um, in that in that video. But yeah, um, that is it. I would also leave down in the description bar as well my Focathon announcement video and all the videos for the other five prompts that I've done so far. So you can check that out. Wow. I've done six prompts, y'all. Six. I have two more to go. <laughs> this is... <laughs> I'm just really happy. Yeah, baby. What is it? What is it? I'm just really happy that... Um, what's what I'm looking for? That it's getting such good... It's getting such amazing response and you all are really liking it. It makes all the work I put in for these videos. It makes it feel really worthwhile so anyway like i said i'm going to leave all the prompts down in the description but below please check it out um but that would be it that would be this video if you liked it please do not forget to give it a big thumbs up check out my other videos subscribe if you want to and if you do decide to subscribe please click on that notification bell so you can know the minute i have a new video go up and make new videos every wednesdays and sundays and i'll see you soon until then Stay passionate, love books, love yourself. Bye.